Hi, good morning. Welcome back to the Create, Share, Inspire podcast. I'm Kristen Omdahl, and we're here live at sunrise in southwest Florida. Specifically, we're at Vanderbilt Beach today, waiting on the sun to rise over the buildings and the trees in the east. And this is the Gulf of Mexico behind me. It is a stormy morning here today, so we shall see how long Mother Nature lets us do the podcast. I've heard some grumbling, rumbling of thunder have not seen any lightning and uh, the bugs are in full form this morning. I'm not seeing comments, but I've also had some other weird things happen with the YouTube app this morning. So who knows what's going on. If you're joining me live, thanks for taking time out of your busy schedule to join me. If you're commenting, I am not seeing it. So if your question is important, please feel welcome to repeat your question in the recorded comments. That's where I'm able to reply to them later in the day and even use them for questions in future podcasts. So as you know, I finished the knit version of the Zen striped shawl yesterday and it's drying on my blocking boards. Could technically be dry as we speak, but I haven't checked it yet and I'm working on the fourth color stripe of the crochet one. We started with Lilac Memories, then we moved on to Stormy Sea, Pink Damask. I'm now working on my fourth color stripe in uh, Harbor Fog, and I'm replicating the stitch pattern that I used in the first and second stripe. So the design for this one is going to be one stitch pattern for uh, stripes one, two, four, and five, and a different stitch pattern for three. If I were redoing this, I probably would have alternated them every other stripe, but anyway, it's going to be pretty. Uh, it's pretty this way, it would be pretty the other way, and once you see the pattern and the chart, you'll be able to figure out exactly where to switch from one stitch pattern to the other so you could do your stripes any way you want. In fact, if you did that, you could do this in one color then, because you could alternate your striping in stitch pattern instead of in color. Speaking of color though, there's something else I wanted to talk about today. I'm so bummed I can't see comments. I'm guessing you guys can still see talk amongst yourselves, which is nice too. That's fine too, but I'm not seeing any comments, so don't think that I'm ignoring you. Uh, there's a glitch with the software this morning and it's not allowing me to see the comments. I knew something was up because I was not able to um, re-upload a thumbnail. You know how when I get to the beach in the morning I like to take a photo of the actual day that I'm here and upload that as the thumbnail? Well I did that this morning like normal and it wouldn't allow the thumbnail to take. So usually when something like that goes wrong I know there's something going on with the app. So we'll see. Anyway. Back to colors that I wanted to talk to you about. Remember last week when we were talking about gemstones because I had a customer contact me asking for help in choosing colors for her five color shawl because she wanted each of the colors to represent the gemstone or birthstone of five people in her family. And uh, I thought that that was actually a really awesome idea for just sharing, just educating everybody on what colors would work for every month. And so I started doing a little research. Well, first of all, we did research together that morning. I think that was Saturday maybe. And you guys shared with me what color each month was because I couldn't remember. And then I popped off of my head which yarns worked and I had all the colors of Be So Fine that morning. It was a lot of fun. If you didn't get a chance to see that episode, go back and watch Saturday's episode. Would that have been maybe two, episode 223? Um, I was at that coffee shop and uh, it was a lot of fun talking about all that. Since then, I've done a little more research on birthstones and gemstones and come to find out there are two lists. There's the modern list of gemstones and birthstones and then there's an old list. I don't remember what it was called, if it was ancient, olden times. I'm not sure what it was called. But anyway, um, not all of the gemstones are the same, which I think is going to open up even more creative possibilities for representing family members, but still picking with a color theme as well. 
So what I was going to do is work on a spreadsheet, get all of that put together, and then put together a pretty blog post with photos of yarns and photos of the gemstone colors. And we can get that all organized beautifully so that when you go to make a gift that has so much hidden meaning in it, it'll be a lot of fun to choose colors based on gemstones of people you love, people you miss, people that are you're giving the gift to, or representing the people around the person you're giving the gift to. Let's say you wanted to give someone a shawl as a gift, or a blanket as a gift, or whatever, and you wanted to represent all the family members in their family. That would be really pretty. Of course, doing it for yourself, for all of your family members, awesome. Or giving someone uh, all the colors of their children or their grandchildren. Um, I think that there's a lot of possibilities there. And I'm sure if the comments were scrolling, we would be brainstorming even more this morning. But I know you're feeling it. And we're gonna have a lot of fun talking about that more after I put up that blog post. So I'm gonna get on that. I've got lots of shipping to do today when I get back to my office. And with any luck, I might be dyeing yarn today. And also on the list for this week is to make body products. I have containers ready to fill have a whole new look for my body care line. Some beautiful new containers that are going to be friendlier for shipping. They also are friendly to the environment and they have a cohesive look and just look so pretty together. There's some white, there's some frost, there's some silver metallic. They're just so pretty and will look great with my logo. So I'm excited to get those done and available in my shop, photographed. It's gonna be super cute. And more fun gifts because gift giving season is coming up. I think I found a tripod for going for walks on the beach together. So I'm hoping that works out, but I've been doing some research on some different types of tripods that don't bounce when you move. So hopefully we'll be able to go looking for the baby shark nursery in the next week or so because this is the beach that we would do that on but I've been very hesitant to go for walks during the podcast because I think the camera shakes too much and it would make people maybe a little motion sick so hopefully that works out so fingers crossed I bought it yesterday so it should probably be here in a week I'm going to turn the camera around so you can see all the beach so this is well there's Dolly the Wonder Wagon here's the beach to the north so we've got a few people here today. Here's where the sun should be coming up, but it's very overcast. It's quite dark here today, too. I don't know if you can tell that. Here's the beach to the south of us. We've got a fishing boat. Plenty of birds. So I did, um, it did, it was brought to my attention that the reason we have so many more birds right now is actually migration is what I thought of immediately last week and then second guessed myself and said I was wrong. So the birds are coming back from Cape Cod or wherever they were all summer and we're getting all of our chatty birds back including Curious George hopefully. Hopefully he's back with us. <laughs> so cute. Colors are beautiful today too. Different. Definitely a strong gray vibe today but still lots of blues. Definitely, you can see this harbor fog color out there too. In that, you see where the sandbar is? Maybe 20, what is that? All right, there's something right here. There's some sort of biggish, oh. Okay, the birds are going after, so maybe it's just a school of fish. The birds are going after something in the water there. Oh, always something to be looking at. The sand is so wet this morning, it's soaked through my towel and my jeans. Who likes wet jeans? Not me. Okay, so what I wanted to talk about is you can see there's a darkish color here in the front where the birds are going crazy. And then you see that sandbar before the water gets dark. 
that's the color that I think reminds me of the color I'm crocheting with this morning. Well, hi guys! The harbor fog color. I guess it's camera ready time for them. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> Man, I still don't see comments. Where? I'm being a big baby. I miss getting to chat with everybody. And I looked for an update on my app. I didn't see that either. Oh well. Hey, if, there, if you've done everything you can do and, there's, and it's still not working, there really is nothing else to do but move on. <laughs> A lady doing yoga about 50 feet from where I'm standing and I've been trying to convince myself all week to do some yoga I uh, I want to start exercising again whether I go for walks or do some yoga I feel like it's time time to start moving again you know when we have our inactive stages we try to tell ourselves Oh, well, I get exercise. I walk from the car to this, and I go up and down the stairs for that. And you know, just as well as I know, that that does not count as exercise, even when we're trying to convince ourselves. So I wish that I have done more than thought about it so far this week, but I have not. But I will share with you guys what I'm doing to keep myself accountable. And so far, I'm only thinking about exercise. but. Hopefully now that I said it out loud to all of you, it'll make me accountable and by tomorrow I will have told you that I have done something or we'll do something together tomorrow. That's my goal. I like to keep myself accountable. It really helps me to get more done when I say things out loud or write them down in a book. Did you know that you are 42% more likely to achieve your goals when you write them down? Isn't that amazing? It is an amazing statistic. But I have to say, I am a list writer and I get a lot of stuff done. So at least here's one example of that being true. Um, especially now with the Create, Share, Inspire notebooks where you can read inspirational quotes, have an opportunity to write and doodle or to doodle and draw while you're thinking about what you want to write about and then write your lists and your thoughts and your positive thoughts. It's just, it's so powerful. I think it's so good. And by the way, uh, issue two is now available at Amazon for both the English and Spanish versions. So you can find Create, Share, Inspire or Crea, Inspira, Compa Crea, Comparte, Inspira. You can find both of them in issue two, which is a beautiful sunset photo on the cover of that book. It has purples and reds and a lot of black silhouette and it is a photo I took on my birthday last year. In fact, last year on my birthday was the first year Marlon was away for my birthday and I didn't get to see him. Well, <laughs> he was at a tennis tournament and my girlfriend took me to a restaurant right here at the Ritz Carlton. See, it's under construction still. Look at that. Season's right around the corner too. Hopefully they finish that soon. Anyway, they have a restaurant on the ground floor tucked into the mangroves where you can see the beach from there. I think it's called Gumbo Lumbo. I think so, not 100%, uh, but it's very tropical. It feels like you're in Jamaica or in the Caribbean. It's so cute. And she took me there for my birthday dinner last year. And while we were sitting there, the sunset was amazing and had purples and oranges and corals and reds. It was gorgeous. And so anyway, that photo is the photo on the cover of issue two of Create, Share, Inspire journal in the English and Spanish versions. And they're both available not only in Amazon US, but they're both available at Amazon all over the world too, in Prime. Oh, 
Oh, I got a good co question about Gage yesterday. Somebody was asking me, and I can't remember where, I get questions in so many different places, which actually makes it incredibly difficult to answer people because you can't always answer something immediately. Sometimes it takes thought or links or information to get back to them. And if somebody's direct messaged me on Instagram or left a comment on YouTube or left a comment on any given post on Facebook or Instagram or wherever else, and they actually needed information in their question, it's extremely difficult to go back and find that. However, and then there's email and website anyway all that stuff combined somebody somewhere messaged or asked me a question yesterday about gauge and she said that she was substituting worsted weight yarn for DK weight yarn in a pattern and her gauge was off by I think she said a quarter inch and could she just go down to the smaller her gauge was a quarter inch bigger than what was called for in the pattern, and this was a garment, so it needed to fit. And she said, going up in yarn, going down in hook, she got a larger gauge, should she go down in size on the pattern to compensate for it? And man, do I wish it was that simple. As complicated as that sounds, but as simple as her, her logic sounds, it's still more complicated than that even, because, when you change the, the thickness of the yarn, you all, and especially since she's going down in hook size, but thicker in yarn, she's adjusting the drape of the fabric too. So she really needs to be more concerned about the, the drape of the fabric before she even considers whether she wants to do it or not. Um, when you go, when you make a denser fabric, you actually run the risk of making a less attractive fabric and therefore a less attractive garment so that would be my first concern is to make sure that she likes the drape she's getting with a thicker yarn in a tighter more dense fabric because she's going down in hook size so she was asking me should I go down in hook size again to achieve gauge or should I stay where I'm at and do a smaller size so I just answered the part about going down in hook size. I would be very wary of what you're creating with a thick yarn and a small hook. And that would apply to knitting needles as well. The tighter you go in your fabric, the less drape your fabric has. So it depends on what you're making and who it's for and all that good stuff. The other quest part of her question was, do I, could I just go down in size? There's a whole lot of math involved in determining if that works. And what I mean by that. The quickest way to do that math would be to take your gauge and multiply it by the, like most sizes are done by bust, right? So let's say she's trying to make a size 36 bust. Whatever your gauge is per inch, you multiply that by the size bust you're making. Let's assume you're going by bust. And if that equals the number of stitches they call for in that widest part of the sweater, then you're fine. And that could apply to whatever size you're making. You're making a 32, a 36, a 40, a 50, a 60, whatever. If your gauge times your finished size equals the number of stitches they call for in any of those sizes, that is a super easy way to, you know, drop you know just drop in to whatever size it like if that math turns out to be what the 32 in the pattern works out but with your gauge it works out for a, a 42 then that's fine but that doesn't happen so neat and tidy in the real world so she says she's off by a quarter of an inch so that quarter of an inch change times 36 inches you know what would be that would be a nine inch difference over the course of that project so it's it's something to really you really have to do the math on it and so she's got a lot to think about and maybe it will work out easily but maybe it won't um so 
even from the information she gave me, there is no straight answer, but there is suggestions for what she can do to figure it out on her own with more research or, you know, or more practice. So my, when I find her email or question or comment or wherever she put it, uh, when I find it later today, I will reply to her the same way I just explained to you that she needs to A, consider whether or not she even likes the density of the fabric and if she's going to like it more when she goes down that hook size again. And then, and if that going down in that hook size will achieve the right gauge, if that is the case, that's easy. Then she's two gauge and she can make the sweater just as the pattern calls for. If she's looking to bump the size, she's going to have to do a little bit more math and make sure that her adjusted gauge measurement actually applies to any of the sizes in, in the pattern. Look at the hiccup, sorry. If anybody has any further questions on that, please feel welcome to leave them for me in the comments. Like I said earlier, the comments are not showing up for me on the live stream this morning. That's why I haven't been able to say hello to anybody or answer any questions live this morning, but that's a pretty meaty topic. And if the live comments are working tomorrow, it'd be a great comment to bring back up because then we can talk about it. You can ask me more questions about it. Maybe we can even go deeper into the subject. Could probably go a month talking about this subject and that's fine because the more we talk about it and the more everybody understands, the more success everybody gets in making garments. So I think we'll end on that note. So hopefully all your wheels are turning now and you're thinking of questions to ask me about Gage and we can dive deeper into this fascinating subject that will help everybody have more success in making garments. But for now, let's take this last minute here to look out on this gorgeous view, soak in the colors, the sounds of the waves, and set our intentions for the day. Thanks so much everybody for taking time out of your busy day to spend a few minutes here with me. I hope you enjoyed the sunrise, the sound of the waves, the beautiful scenery, chatting with me, well not chatting with me, <laughs> listening to me and chatting with everyone else. Hopefully you guys were able to chat still this morning. Let us make time to create, share and inspire today and every day. I'll see you all tomorrow. Bye.